my name is Ashley Fitch. I'm the Senior Director of Social Determinants of Health and Community Partnerships at Mount Sinai Health Partners. During this presentation, we'll talk about social determinants of health, what they are, and why they matter. The information is broken into four parts. Part one, what are social determinants of health? Part two, what are health systems doing to understand patient social determinants, social factors, and social needs? Part three, acting to address social needs. And part four, social determinants of health coding and reporting. Part one, what are social determinants of health? Let's start with some background information on healthcare spending. The US spends the most on healthcare as a percentage of gross domestic product. You can see the line at the top indicating that in 2018, the US spent nearly 17% of GDP on healthcare, noticeably above the other lines. That rate has continued to increase since 2018. Although the US spends the highest percent of our GDP on healthcare, we don't achieve the best health outcomes. This graph shows life expectancy between 1980 and 2018. The US is at the bottom with an average life expectancy of 78.6 years. When we dig more into what healthcare spending goes towards, we see that the US has a lower ratio of social to healthcare spending compared to other developed countries. This graph shows 9% going towards social care and 16% towards healthcare with 9% being the lowest percent spent on social care of the countries listed. Although we spend less on social care, it's recognized that only 20% of health outcomes are driven by access and quality of health care. The remaining 80% of health outcomes are impacted by social determinants of health. Consequently, leveraging resources outside clinical walls is key to treating patients with complex needs and driving better health outcomes. A little more about social determinants of health and what they are. Social determinants of health are the conditions in which people are born, live, learn, work, play, and age that affect a wide range of health and quality of life outcomes and risks. Determinants include economic stability, education, social and community context, health and healthcare access, and neighborhood and built environment. While it is clear that social determinants of health contribute to a person's health status, the term is often used imprecisely and conflated with similar yet distinct terms such as social risk factors and social needs. Again, social determinants are defined as the conditions in which people are born, grow, work, live, and age, and the wider set of forces and systems shaping the conditions of daily life. Economic stability is an example. A sample action to address economic stability would be to advocate for policy changes that promote housing stability or advocate for robust federal and state nutrition programs. Social risk factors are specific adverse social conditions, such as food and housing insecurity, that are associated with poor health. A person may have numerous risk factors, but have fewer immediate social needs. Sample actions include implementing housing and food insecurity screening tools in provider settings. Social needs are the individual's immediate non-medical needs. An example is a food or housing need. Sample actions include integrating social workers in provider settings to link individuals with needed resources offered in the community by local community-based organizations. It's also worth noting that the terms health-related social needs and social drivers of health are commonly used. While healthcare organizations can help to screen for social risk factors and address unmet social needs, cross-sector collaboration is essential to tackle upstream social conditions and determinants. Addressing social determinants of health is a primary approach to achieving health equity. Health equity is when everyone has the opportunity to attain their full health potential and no one is disadvantaged from achieving this potential because of their social position or other socially determined circumstances. Social determinants of health, such as poverty, unequal access to health care, lack of education, stigma, and racism are underlying contributing factors of health inequity. The list at the bottom includes some considerations related to health care equity. Part two, what are health systems doing to understand patient social determinants, social factors, and social needs? 
Many healthcare providers have established teams and departments dedicated to understanding and addressing social determinants of health. Social workers, care managers, community health workers, and other types of providers have worked for decades to understand and address social determinants. Examples of other dedicated teams or departments include population health departments, offices of diversity, inclusion, and belonging, and quality teams focused on equity. Data collection is also a key component. Many health systems are gathering patient level data on social needs and or leveraging publicly available data sources to understand population level trends. This is an example of a high level SDOH strategy. The first step is to identify social needs. This could be through targeted or universal screening. The next step is to identify corresponding resources. These are often delivered by preferred community-based organization partners. The next step is to make a referral to the CBO, then to track the impact and outcomes of those referrals and associated resources. Next, ideally the various parties work to secure sustainable funding for the community-based organization so they can scale screening and resources, and finally to advocate for system change to address upstream causes. Screening for social needs is one way to identify and impact more at-risk patients. So what is screening? It's conducted to determine whether a particular need exists. It's intended to be short and consist of broad questions. It identifies individuals who may need additional support, resources, or further evaluation. Who should be considered for social needs screening? Patients not already connected to social work, care management, or nursing, and patients who could benefit from better access to community resources. Why screen for social needs? Screening is a best practice and key strategy to achieve better health equity and outcomes. Screening is also part of the 2023 Joint Commission Equity Certification and Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services Inpatient Prospective Payment Program. There are a variety of mechanisms to screen and assess for social needs. Some approaches are patient administered, others are provider administered. Text-based outreach and pushing out questionnaires through patient portals are primarily patient self-reported mechanisms. On-site check-in kiosks are a mix between patient administered and provider supported, and questions asked by a clinical team member during a clinical encounter are considered provider administered. The goal is usually to have information shared by patients about their social needs go back into the electronic medical record. In some cases, supplemental third-party data from publicly available sources and or community-based organizations is also documented in the electronic medical record. This type of documentation not only ensures actions are taken and resources are provided when social needs are identified, but also that providers can leverage the information for more informed clinical decision-making. For example, if a patient is unhoused, they may not be able to easily refrigerate insulin. Part three, acting to address social needs. Community resource guides, referral platforms, and networks of community-based organizations are often leveraged to address health-related social needs. Online community resource guides ideally offer a comprehensive list of programs. They're designed to be user-friendly, to display accurate program information, to be easily accessible, and to have the potential for electronic medical record integration. CBO referral and data tracking platforms allow users to send and track the status of referrals, to report data on usage and outcomes, and have the potential for EMR integration and bi-directional data sharing. Community-based organization networks are centrally organized. They provide reliable, high-quality services, accept referrals, and share information. When thinking about how to leverage these different resources, it's best to think about how to define an action or a resource for any scenario. These resources can be leveraged in different ways to address different needs. On the low-touch, limited outcome tracking end of the spectrum, a link to an online community resource page can be provided to a patient. One step up from that is for a care team member to facilitate a search based on known social needs and provide a customized resource list. Beyond that, a care team member can make a referral to a community-based organization. Even better, a closed-loop referral to a preferred CBO or a closed-loop referral to a preferred CBO where data is shared through 
electronic medical record data integration. This is an example of a community resource guide landing page. Here you can see an example of the categories of services and resources provided. And this shows a sample of how referrals can be made directly to a community-based organization. And on the right, how information can be shared directly with patients through email, text, and other mechanisms. It's also important to be aware that there are a growing number of reporting requirements and coding indicators related to social determinants of health. There are three major national hospital reporting measures and standards related to social determinants of health. The first is the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services Hospital Screening for Social Drivers of Health and Screen Positive Measures. These are voluntary in 2023 and mandatory in 2024. They're part of the Hospital Inpatient Quality Reporting Program. The next one is the Joint Commission Healthcare Disparities Reduction and Patient-Centered Communication Accreditation Standards. These are effective as of January 1st, 2023. They provide new and revised requirements to reduce healthcare disparities in a variety of different clinical settings. The third is the National Committee for Quality Assurance Health Equity Plus Accreditation Standards. This is for organizations further along on their health equity and social determinants of health journeys. It focuses on collecting data on community social risk factors and patient social needs and to ensure organizations offer social resources that have the most impact. When referring to social determinants of health documentation, Z codes are most often referenced. Z codes ranging from Z55 to Z65 are the ICD-10 and counter reason codes used to document social determinants of health data. Z codes are a form of SDOH documentation and their use could lead to risk adjustment, direct reimbursement, and more informed clinical care. That concludes this presentation about social determinants of health. Again, my name is Ashley Fitch, Senior Director of Social Determinants of Health and Community Partnerships at Mount Sinai Health System. Thank you.